Welcome back to Medical Medical and today we shall be covering the plasma cell dyscrasias where we shall cover into details the multiple myeloma and in our next uh, tutorial we shall look at the monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance and Waldstrom's macroglobulinemia. To start with, let's define what's a dyscrasia and a plasma cell dyscrasia. A dyscrasia is a term that refers to a disease or a disorder and in most cases a disorder of blood origin. A plasma cell discretion, on the other hand, is a monoclonal proliferation of a plasma cell that produces a clonal immunoglobulin protein. These plasma cell discretions are derived from malignant B lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cells. A plasma cell discretion, that is disorder, like we have said, is a group of hematological malignancies or cancers that are characterized by unregulated expansion of a single clone immunoglobulin producing plasma cells and a resultant increase in serum levels of a single monoclonal immunoglobulin or its fragments. The common plasma cell discretions that we see are multiple myeloma, monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance and a Waldstrom's macroglobulinemia. When we say Waldstrom's macroglobulinemia, we mean a malignant disorder of the bone marrow and the lymphatic tissues, which is uh, normally a type of a non-Hodgkin lymphoma that is characterized by a presence of abnormally large numbers of beta lymphocytes. A monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance is characterized by a presence of monoclonal immunoglobulins in the serum without other findings of multiple myeloma. So each of these types of uh, plasma dyscrasias produce a monoclonal or an M protein. This M protein is a unique protein of a single type, for example, a protein clone. Okay, let's get to our first uh, type of uh, plasma cell discretion, which is multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is actually a common primarily born tumor that accounts for about 1% of all malignant cases and commonly affects older people more than 40 to 50 years of age. And the common features that are usually shared uh, among the patients with multiple myeloma and plasma cell discretion is that all of these disorders originate from a clone of beta cells that differentiate into plasma cells and secrete a single complete or partial immunoglobulin. And the most common M protein that is produced by these disorders is immunoglobulin G followed by immunoglobulin A. And these uh, immunoglobulins have both a heavy and a light chain component as you can remember on the structure of and immunoglobulin because the serum is usually containing excessive amounts of uh, immunoglobulins these disorders have been known as monoclonal gammopathy and the associated immunoglobulin is referred to as an M component multiple myeloma is characterized by presence of monoclonal plasma cells in the bone marrow plus one of the following features which we have a mnemonic uh, CRAB to help him master it, where C stands for an elevated calcium levels that's hypercalcemia, R stands for rhinophila, A stands for anemia, and B stands for bone marrow lesions. In the pathogenesis of multiple myeloma, Multiple myeloma is usually characterized by proliferation of malignant or cancerous plasma cells in the bone marrow and some osteolytic bone lesions throughout the skeletal system. As with other hematopoietic malignancies, multiple myeloma is recognized as uh, being associated with chromosomal abnormalities. And one of the characteristic features resulting from a, a proliferating of a cancerous plasma cell in patients with multiple myeloma is that these patients have unregulated production of abnormal monoclonal paraprotein known as the M protein. In some rare cases, these patients have plasma cells that produce only the kappa and lambda light chain in the immunoglobulin molecule, and these light chains are already excreted in urine. So with this we call them the Benz-Jones proteins. 
Usually, the clinical features or manifestations of patients who have a plasma cell dyscrasia results from one of the three pathways. That is either a proliferation of a neoplastic cells and invasion to other organs. Patients can also experience symptoms resulting from a secretion of excessive immunoglobulins. And also sometimes it's a host response to a tumor or a cancer. Patients who have a plasma cell dyscrasia, like we say, they have an M protein. That's an, a monoclonal immunoglobulin in their serum. And the M component or the M protein usually represents the immunoglobulin of solitary light or maybe heavy chain that is being secreted and quantitated by performing an immunofixation on the serum protein electrophoresis. These M components are not really as specific to blood cell dyscrasias because they can also be found in other diseases. And what are the most common clinical features of the signs and symptoms that patients with uh, blood dyscrasias, for example, uh, multiple myeloma in this case, present with? These are the patients who will complain of bone pain and some have pathologic fractures. They also experience some neurologic manifestations of the disease, for example, confusion, lethargy, and this uh, occurs as a result of excessive calcium levels in blood known as hypercalcemia. And also, patients with multiple myeloma present with anemia. This anemia results from a marrow replacement as well as from inhibition of hematopoiesis by tumor cells. These patients will also be at a higher risk of developing recurrent infections and in most cases they result from a bacteria Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae and Escherichia coli which cause uh, really serious clinical problems. And usually these infections result from a suppression of uh, the normal immunoglobulin secretion. And lastly, these patients will develop with a, a what we call hyperviscosity syndrome that uh, results from excessive production and aggregation of myeloma proteins, but it's more characteristic of a lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. And eventually, some of them result, uh, present with features of renal failure or renal insufficiency. So we have a simpler way of helping you master the most clinical manifestations of multiple myeloma. Thus, we use a mnemonic plasma, where P stands for proteinuria or renal insufficiency, and L stands for lytic bone lesions and hypercalcemia. A represents anemia and abnormal bleeding where S is, uh, stands for sepsis and infections, and M is for bone marrow involvement, and the last A is for amyloidosis. So, for you to remember the clinical features, use the mnemonic plasma. Then, how can we diagnose patients with multiple myeloma? The diagnosis of multiple myeloma is usually based on the clinical presentation of the patient, some blood tests and a bone marrow examination. We commonly do a serum and urine protein electrophoresis uh, to see which M protein is really predominantly produced and in these cases of uh, patients with multiple myeloma we usually see an M spike protein. The classic triad of a bone marrow plasma cytosis is that these patients have more than 10% plasma cells lytic bone lesions and either the serum M protein spike or the presence of Benz Jones proteins in the urine is a definitive diagnosis for multiple myeloma. Urine protein electrophoresis is usually needed because uh, light chains are rapidly filtered from blood so in some cases you might easily miss out if you only do a serum protein electrophoresis. Then uh, Imaging whereby we do a skeletal radiograph is important to establish the presence of a punched out lytic bone lesions. Other laboratory features or examinations include a, a blood test uh, revealing hypercalcemia or elevated calcium levels in blood, a retrocyte sedimentation rate that's more than 30, and uh, some features of kidney failure. Patients with multiple myeloma usually present with a narrow anion gap because a globulin is cationic.
and an increase in unmeasured cations decreases the anion gap. So the workup of our multiple myeloma patients will include a complete blood count, which often shows a normal cytic, normal chromic anemia, and a peripheral blood smear will show a relox formation. Then, after diagnosing this patient, so you know, what are the treatment options and plans for these patients? These are uh, patients who are usually treated with thalidomide or lenalidomide, which are second generation thalidomide drugs, combined with a corticosteroid, and in most cases, that's dexamethasone. Another agent that is used in the treatment of patients with multiple myeloma is a proteasome inhibitor. That's a 26S proteasome inhibitor, the most common one being bortezomib. A high dose chemotherapy with orthologous stem cell transplantation is usually considered an appropriate frontline therapy for patients who are younger than 70 years and newly diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Allogenic transplantation or usually offers a prolonged disease-free outcomes and a potential cure, but it's usually high cost uh, incurred during treatment with this allogenic transplantation, and they are related with uh, a higher mortality compared to others. But however, the disease is presently not curable. So patients who experience a painful pain lesions or plasma cytomas are usually treated with radiations, and also these are the patients who are encouraged to take a pneumococcal vaccination to help them against infectious complications of most of the streptococcus pneumonia and staphylococcus aureus. Biphosphonates are usually administered monthly to reduce skeletal complications. And in other cases, we can use monoclonal antibodies and some immunomodulatory agents. Thank you for joining us to the end of this video. We like to request that you subscribe to our channel, press the bell button, like and share our videos and let's meet in the next tutorial.